Ask any coach and they will tell you. The key to success is building on a solid foundation of fundamentals. After rebranding as PGA Tour 2K and launching a well-received offering in 2020, developer HB Studios continued its path to being one of the best, albeit only PGA Tour licensed games around today. What 2K21 did well was put you into the action of being on the tour and surrounded you with an easy-to-pick-up, yet surprisingly deep golf experience. It didn't reinvent the wheel, but with a lack of available official PGA Tour games at the time, it filled the void left by the previous game's generation's powerhouses and built upon the success they had generated with the Golf Club series of games. With this year's follow-up, PGA Tour 2K23, the studio looks to continue building on what they have done before, while improving on some of the criticisms of the previous entry in the hopes of putting out the definitive PGA Tour experience. Thankfully, PGA Tour 2K23 mostly succeeds in that endeavor, as the newest entry in the series continues to feature realistic golf action on real courses, with real players, and officially licensed brands for apparel, clubs, and balls. While being the only real video game golf option at the moment could have resulted in the game that feels exactly like its previous iteration, 2K23 adds new features and look to respond to the criticism of the last game to be better than before. While PGA Tour 2K23 has taken steps to improve on its predecessor, it does feel as though it's a two steps forward, one step back amount of progression. If you played 2K21, or even any golf games in recent years, you will once again find yourself right at home within this game. The basics are the same as they have been for quite some time. Pick a golfer, pick a course, pull down the right stick for your backswing, push forward for your downswing. Modern golf controls have not changed much over the years, and really had no reason to, as the swing stick method of control gives you a realistic feel for controlling the club like you would if you were standing out there yourself. Stick controls are something that sports games have tried to introduce in their annual offerings as well, because it's the most immersive way to play without holding a motion controller in your hands. While the controls for 2K21 were what you would come to expect and weren't mentioned as a criticism, 2K23 introduces another way to play, one that also feels familiar while being something that may take some time to get used to. When you first start the game, you are presented with the option of how you want to play. Either stick controls with the left or right stick, or the new system, the three-click swing, which may sound a lot like the bar meter from golf games of old, but introduces some minor tweaks to give you some deeper level of control. The old meter had you pressing the swing button to start the meter, tapping again to set the power, and tapping a third time for the accuracy, with segments to tell you the ideal time to press for the best shot. 2K23 changes this by adding more precision control and more timing meters. To use the three-click option, you instead have to hold down the swing button and release it when the power circle fills to the correct amount. You're then presented with two additional meters, one for the swing path and one for the club face angle. These move around the center circle like hands on a clock, and you need to stop each meter in the appropriate area in order to hit the best shot. The three-click option should feel easy to understand, and after taking a few swings with it, you really get the hang of things and can start ripping with the best of them. While this new control option was easier, and certainly more forgiving than previous stick controls, the trade-off is that it's less immersive. Swinging with the stick can be frustrating at times, as the speed in which you push forward for your downswing greatly impacts the direction your ball will fly. Doing so too fast or too slow will raise your chances of a hole-killing duff, something that almost never happened when using the three-click option. But it also is the most realistic way to play, as you control the golfer, not the meter. That being said, the new control option was a welcome one, and the one that was used most often while playing, as it provided a more fun experience given the higher likelihood of success on each swing. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, so the choice is up to you. But giving players options in how they choose to play was an unexpected surprise. The game also lets each player and multiplayer choose how they want to swing, So even if you are playing with one shared controller, each player can set their preferred swing style. Giving players a new way to play seems to be at the core of changes made for this year, as not only was a new control scheme added, but the game no longer locks you into playing as your create a golfer. One of the things that 2K21 lacked was the option to play as tour pros, and that is rectified here. While not everyone was looking to play as somebody other than themselves, giving players options and choices is a good thing, and it showed that HB Studios took feedback on the previous games to heart. This year, in addition to being able to play as your my player across the various modes, you can also play as one of 14 professional players and two really famous amateurs in the casual round single and multiplayer modes. The list of available players is headlined by Tiger Woods, the name synonymous with golf video games, as the series that bears his name is the most famous golf franchise and dates back all the way to 1998. Love him or hate him, having a player like Tiger in the game is a great addition, and being able to play alongside him with your my player will be a joy for players 
as you can strive to beat a living legend of the game. Joining him are familiar names like Justin Thomas, Tony Finau, Colin Morikawa, Bubba Watson, and Ricky Fowler, among others. The game introduces a few female golfers, Lydia Ko, Brooke Henderson, and Lexi Thompson, though still lack LPGA Tour branding and events, so playing as and against these women is still limited to the casual mode. Your My Player character won't be the only amateur playable in this game, as noted golf enthusiasts and world champion basketball players Steph Curry and Michael Jordan join the roster. Both are fun additions to the game that should help bring in a different audience than the standard golf fan, and hopefully mean that more celebrity players join the game post-launch. The prospect of creating your own pro-am with players from across sports and popular culture is something that previous golf games have not included, and could make this game stand apart. While the addition of pros and celebrities to the game's playable offering is a welcome one, the game never showcases their names while using them in a round, opting instead to display the username of the player on the scorecard. Even worse, when playing multiplayer, the game displays the username of player 1, along with the word guest and a corresponding number for the other players. This makes things extra confusing when you play with your friends on the couch, as the order of players is never the same shot to shot. So you have to remember who is guest 1, guest 2, or guest 3, instead of remembering who is John Rahm, who is Justin Rose, and who is playing as Xander, as you may not be able to tell by looking at the player models who is who, since you see them first from the side or from the back. The announcers also do not mention players by name, instead using second person pronouns like saying, you're up next, or let's see how you approach this hole. These are things that can easily be patched later, but for now the lack of name display and acknowledgement hurts the immersion, as it no longer feels like you are watching a televised event. When you're not playing as a pro, you can take your My Player out for a few rounds across the various modes. Like last game, you'll want to create your player first, though there are blank templates if you don't want to spend the time on making an in-game version of yourself. The creation options don't feel as robust this year, and the changes you can make are limited to specific features like eyes, nose, mouth, and jaw but do not allow for additional tweaks to really create something that looks like you. For example, the body slider in this game only goes up and down, so every player you make will be a skinny one of various heights. There's also no way to import your previous character, or, like in other 2K sports games, scan your face into the game. While not a deal breaker, the lack of in-depth creation tools may frustrate players, especially if you spent any amount of time in the previous game doing so. You can create up to three guest characters though, so if you have friends you normally play locally with, they can have players that look like them in the game as well. While the appearance editor may not be as in-depth as it was before, 2K23 opts to give more options to how your character plays, with the introduction of skill trees and player archetypes. You can choose the type of player you want to be, and what areas of your game will be your strong suit. You can then use attribute points to increase the effectiveness of each club type in your bag. These RPG-like elements allow for the progression through the career mode to be worth something, as your in-game player gets better as you do. The more you play, the more stat points you get to use, but you also progress through a season pass, a recent familiar staple of games as service games. You get awarded with various items throughout the season, which last a few months, and depending on whether you pay for the season pass will determine on how many items you receive, with 10 free tiers and 50 tiers available to gift you items, credits, and XP if you spend the $10. Thankfully, there are no loot boxes in this game, as everything is purchasable via in-game currency, and you see what you are getting, rather than it being randomized. Once you have your player, you can use them elsewhere in the game, such as My Career, which functions as the same way it did in 2K21, where you start in Q School, work your way through the Corn Fairy Tour, and try to earn your PGA card in the hopes of winning the FedEx Cup. You still play through events on each tour across 20 real-life courses, up from 17 last time, but you can mix up the locations for certain events if you want to play elsewhere. The newest way to use your player is in the new Top Golf mode, which if you've ever played at any of the Top Golf facilities, or more specifically, simulators, should be instantly recognizable. You hit your ball like on any normal driving range, with various targets throughout the range that are worth different points depending on how far back the target is and where the ball lands within a given target. The game calls out specific targets to hit in order to maximize your score, and the player with the most points at the end of 10 balls wins. While it may not be as robust as the real thing, the virtual Top Golf is a great new mode, that feels like a more fun way to practice in-game rather than just hitting the range, which is also possible, and should allow for some great single and multiplayer fun. PGA Tour 2K23 is a worthy successor to 2K21, as the core gameplay elements stay consistent, with new features and controls to add to what was there before. Not everything is as good as the previous game, but the elements where the game is better seem to be more important than the areas where it isn't. The fundamental gameplay is still some of the best golf in recent gaming history, and the new ways to play add depth to a game that last time felt a little lacking. Ultimately, if you enjoyed the previous iteration of this franchise, you will find all the same things to love here 
as it can be just as frustrating and rewarding as playing the real thing, which is what any good sports game should hope to accomplish.